Hello again, family and friends. Welcome to another episode of Brain Power TV with Dr. Echo. And it's my amazing, it's my pleasure to introduce to you this amazing lady we're gonna hear from today. Her name is Allison and she's an educator. Hi. And Hi. she loves math. So she's gonna tell us why and how we can fall in love with math and how it'll help our brains function better. So, Alison, please welcome to Brain Power TV and tell us how you fell in love with Matt. Oh, Dr. Echo, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And um, I guess I should start by saying you don't have to love math to help your kids. So if you're sitting here thinking, I hate math, it's like my least favorite thing to help them with, like, don't worry, I have lots of tips to help you make it easier for you and your kids. Um, but to introduce myself, yes, my name is Allison Dillard, and I am a math professor at a community college. And I'm also the author of several math books. So I have Crush Math Now, Raise Your Math Grade. Um, and then my newest book is the Love Math Journal, which is actually a growth mindset journal for fourth through eighth grade math students. And yes, I love math. I actually host the Allison Loves Math podcast, where I get to interview, you know, educators and I don't know, leaders and like parenting and education on all of the different ways that we can help students to succeed in math. So yes, math is kind of my jam. Yay, it's so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> so yeah, so how, so you said you do help parents and you help kids. And Alison, actually, before we went on air, Alison was just telling me how I love my journal. She's going to be translating it into French. And I told her, oh, this is amazing. It's the beginning of great things because now you can, you can translate into any language, right, Alison? Yes, yes. It was really cool to actually, it's the first book that I've had translated into another language. And it was very cool. Actually, my co-author for the book is from Canada. And so they have a lot of French speaking schools up there and needing in need of French resources and French math resources. So we created it there. And yes, I'm excited. I love the idea of getting the journal into schools, not just here in the United States, but across the world. I That would just make me so happy, you know? Yeah. That would be Fabulous. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping for that for you. So <laughs> yeah, so let's start with kids. There are some kids watching. Can you, can you give kids, what are your best tips on how to fall in love with math or how to do better with math or how they should think about math? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for, let's, let's start with how to think about math. Okay. So there are a lot of kids who think that they are just not good at math. Okay, so this is you, right? If you just think I'm not good at math, some people are naturally good at it. I'm just bad at it. I don't get it. I just don't have the ability to do it. I want you to think of it not as like, like some magical thing. It's not like Harry Potter where some people have magical powers and some don't, right? Math is actually just a skill, right? And so it's a skill, right? Just like learning how to play soccer, just like learning how to play the piano, um, just like learning how to read, actually. And so I think if you can change change how you think about math and just remember it's a skill and it takes practice, then that can help you sort of get out of that mindset of like, oh my gosh, it's just too hard and I can't do it because that mindset kind of sets students up to give up before they even really give it a good try. Yes. And I love what your poster says on your wall. It doesn't get easier. You get stronger because, oh, I love that. Thinking about it as a skill mm -hmm. because I often tell my patients, if you can can you memorize all the all the plays you have in football? They're like, yes. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So that means that your brain is working really well. And you can learn <laughs> the schoolwork you have. And they're just looking at me like this. But it's so true. I love what you said about that mindset shift. I'm sure that helps even the parents as well. Right, right. And it's true for parents too, right? Because I think a lot of us grew up with a different mindset. We were actually told growing up like, oh, some people are good at math and some people aren't. And, you know, it's, it is a different way of looking at math than I think how we, we might've grown up from it. And next you were talking about why do we need math? Like, why is it important? And I think that goes back to what you were talking about with the football plays, right? It's, we have the ability to do math, just like we have the ability to remember all of the football plays or learn how to dribble the ball in soccer, right? Whatever it is, we have the ability, but with like the football play example, there's a really strong motivation to do it, right? Because if you don't memorize it, you're gonna mess up in the game. You're gonna let your teammates down, right? So there's a really strong, like it's very obvious, I guess, the reasons why you need to do it. So you do it. And I think what's hard about math, especially for younger students, right, is sometimes it's 
it's like, well, why do we need math? And a lot of those reasons are very grown up reasons. You know, it's like, well, you need math to meet certain requirements to get certain jobs, right? You need math in order to understand finances, which is also a more grown up thing. You need it to solve really complicated world problems. It's also a grown up thing. So a lot of those answers really come back to you're learning math because it's like it's a foundational grown up skill if you want to build whatever life it is that you have if you want to not have limits on what you can do as a grown up and not have limits on the impact that you can make as a grown up because you know as if you ever watch the tv right we know there are a lot of problems in the world and we need all of you guys to grow up to be able to solve very complex problems right. um and so some of the the need for math it's a little bit more long term but it is very, very important as much as much as those football plays, you know, even though it might not seem like it in the moment. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Yep. So what are some tips that you can give kids to make math easier? OK, so we covered I'm trying to think, we covered the mindset part of it. So right. first, OK, I'm going to do just like a super easy, almost like scheduling tip. OK, if math is hard for you, do math first. Right. So do math homework first. It's like the silliest thing, but so often students leave their math homework till the very end because they don't like it. Mm -hmm. And if you think about just like your energy during the day, it just, it goes down throughout the day, right? right. And so you have the least ability to concentrate, the least ability to think through hard things and just to, to have that like persistence and grit that you need to get through hard math problems, it's at the lowest point at the end of the day. So I'd say if like an easy switch is just do it first, save the easy other homework for last. And that can make a really big difference just in terms of, you know, making math like on a daily basis easier. Yeah, that's so simple, but wow, I'm sure. It's, it's so fun. simple. <laughs> no, but serious, actually you can put that in everything in your life, really. Mm -hmm. the easy thing set your mind to tackle it and do it and get mm -hmm. it yeah. absolutely yeah no i try to do that too right even with right. with writing i try to do writing first thing in the day because it's the thing that's the most important and it is the hardest thing for me to do consistently you right. know right and 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 that also points to being aware of what you're good at and what you find not yes. you know, things that you find a little more difficult because then if you're truthful with yourself then you can plan better mm -hmm. so trying to pretend <laughs> and then yes. you do anything, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're right. That's a really important learning skill. I think it's not just math, right? It's learning how to learn. I think an important part of being a student is learning yet yeah, what your strengths and weaknesses are, right? Um, being able to estimate how much time things take you to, right. to do or to complete, you know, um, and, and all of that is good to reflect on that sort of stuff and like you said be honest with yourself and plan accordingly yeah love it okay more tips for the kids for you. all right so this is the tip that everybody likes the least okay because it is the hardest all right um in order to improve in math you have to strengthen your math foundations okay now what this means is that math because math is a skill and it builds upon itself Right. right that means that if you're trying to do say you're in high school right you're in algebra 2 and you're trying to do algebra 2 level work there are actually hundreds if not more if not thousands of prerequisite skills that you have learned from kindergarten all the way up through the beginning of the semester that lead to your ability to do these complex algebra 2 problems right, right. and one of the things that's the hardest for students to to remember is that Oftentimes the mistakes that we make on our current material come from things in the past that we maybe didn't learn well enough or we maybe forgot. All right. So focus on previous skills that you might be causing you to make mistakes. And the reason why I say this is because I teach at a community college, right? And so these are college students, right? And so I get college students in my classes who are making multiplication multiplication mistakes. OK, and the thing that pains me so much about that is that we learn multiplication in what is it? Second grade, I think we start and then goes into third, I think. Right. And so these poor students 
from second, third, fourth, all the way through high school into college have been making mistakes on all of their math tests because of one skill from second grade that they didn't at some point along the way bother to go back and relearn. Right, and so, nobody stopped them this whole time. And nobody stopped them the whole time, right? Which does go back to being a student. Ultimately, it's your responsibility, right? right. The teachers have so many students, they can't right. remind every single one of them all of the different foundations that they need. So ultimately, even though it would be nice for a teacher to remind you of this, you have to be the one to look at yourself and say, what mistakes am I making? Where did those mistakes come from? And how can I go back and learn it? And honestly, if you're in algebra two and you just have to go back and remember what six times seven is, you can do a couple of flashcards you have it done in a week. It's so easy compared to the hard stuff you're currently learning. And that is really the fastest way to raise your grade is to track those mistakes and go back and learn those prerequisite skills. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Instead of putting a bandaid, just go fix the thing and then you can smooth sailing forward. Yes, okay. and, and I'll add that so many students call these mistakes careless errors. They say, I understand everything, but I just make careless errors. And the thing about calling them careless errors, it's, it sort of Hands takes on. away any responsibility for yeah. fixing it because, oh, it's careless. There's nothing I can do to fix it. I know it. And I can't tell you how many students have been wildly insulted when I tell them that they don't know multiplication, okay? because it is offensive. That's something I learned so many years ago. All right, but if you fix that, instead of just, like you said, putting a Band-Aid on it, that will help your grade more than anything else. Multiplication, division, order of operations, and fractions. Those are the four skills, keep an eye out for those. Yeah. Yes. So what should, what should kids do in the summertime? What should kids do in the summertime? I mean, with regards to what they learned the year before. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea for once in a while to flip through and just look over things, especially now we've learned that if we identify spots that we are not quite sure mm -hmm. of. What do you think of that? So my husband and I have opposing views on this. <laughs> he likes to use the summer to have the kids do workbooks to do extra work so they learn a little extra to supplement what they learned during the school year and to like you'd said, um, learn any weak spots, right? Review any weak spots that they have. Right. I, on the other hand, like to give them a break during the summer because I feel like we learn, 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 learn so much that right. it's just nice to have a period of time where we don't have to worry about that stuff. So right. I'd say if you are a student, again, this goes back to understanding yourself as a student, learning how to learn, thinking about what you need. Right. If you kind of know that you're behind, and if you kind of know, gosh, I'm going to be in trouble in the fall when I start whatever the next class is, right. then think about what it is you need to learn and review those things. Right. On the other hand, if you're one of those students who's always go, 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 I always get everything, you know, don't think I need to learn extra so I can make sure that I have that A. Mm -hmm. That might be a situation where a break would actually really do you good. So I think that is something where it really depends on, on the student. And so as a student, right, parting of, part of learning how to learn is assessing that for yourself. Right, so important. And that's such an important skill for adults too as well, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what tips do you have for a parents listening? For parents listening? Yes. I would say for parents listening, just because I've met so many moms in particular with math anxiety, which then can so easily carry over to our kids. Mm -hmm. My advice for you, especially if you have math anxiety, is to understand that you can still help your kids with math, even if you don't understand the math, which I know is a little bit weird, right? But if you think about really any skill, it goes back to math being a skill, right? You need somebody who's an expert in that skill to teach the skill, right? But then you also need somebody who's there for, I don't know, I like to call them a champion, right? They don't have to be the expert, but they're the person who is helping the student along, right? Saying, you can do this, just work hard. You can help to them to pick themselves up when they fall. You can help them to believe in themselves when they don't know how to do something. And so you can still be that champion for your kid when it comes to math, even if you don't know the math itself. And I think all parents will eventually hit a point where they don't know the math, right? If my kids go on to get PhDs in math, they're going to hit a, a level of math where I can't help them anymore, right? But I can still tell them, of course, you're able to do it, right? Oh, 
doesn't matter if you didn't do well on that test, you pick yourself up and keep going, right? right? And then I can help them to create the team, right? Or build the team of experts who can help them, right? So who is the teacher that can help them? Or maybe who is the tutor who can help them? Who's the family friend um, who is actually the expert in that area and set them up with a person who can help them? Yes, 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 yes. I love that because it's so important what we parents see. So if we start off projecting our fears and our feelings of inadequacies on the kids, then they just suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So and okay, so some so literally just some wording tips. So this is nice and easy stuff, right? Sort of like say this instead of that as a parent. So okay. as a parent, if your kid is saying, I'm really bad at math and I can't do this don't say I'm really bad at math too. It's okay. All right. It's, you, as parents, right. We're, we're trying to empathize with our kid. We don't want them to feel bad. So I think that's a really easy answer to say mm -hmm. instead, you don't have to say, Oh, I love math and I'm brilliant. Don't lie to them. Right. We don't want to do that. But instead you just say, I know it's hard, right. But it's a skill and you keep practicing. Yes. Right. Okay. So sometimes that tough love is actually what they need. Not us to just, um, empathize with them right 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 especially when it's something negative and we mm -hmm. know it's something that they need and mm -hmm. it doesn't help them to say then they'll just believe you know the whole family just doesn't do, get math i mean what <laughs> right right and so that's another thing right if i think another problem st students run into is that they they hate math, right? It's not even just that it's hard, it's that they hate it and they think it's pointless. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember in one of my earlier classes, I actually, I asked my class, why do you need math? And, and nobody knew the answer. You know, it was a, like an early algebra class. Everyone was taking it because it was a requirement and stuff. And so your student or your child may not actually know why they're taking math. And so you can help them to understand that too. Even if you don't have a good relationship with math, you can explain to them all the ways that it could help you, you know, or you wish you had understood it better, you know, um, especially like if you have student debt or debt of your own, right? Understanding the math in order to get out of that is really important, right? And we can even, you know, you can explain it to your kid that way, but you can also say, learn from my mistakes right? Learn the math so you don't get into debt. Learn the math so you know how to save for a house or a car, you mm -hmm. know? And so all of that stuff, you know, I think whether you love math or not, you, you know, you can absolutely help your kid to, to appreciate it and to learn how to study it. Yeah. Or even bringing it back to home, like saying, oh, we're going grocery shopping. So we need to, mm -hmm. so this is how much money we have. Yes. So if we know <laughs> that, then that way we won't overspend and we won't buy more things than we need to. And, and all of that, and we'll have enough money to get all the groceries we need. Mm -hmm. So and, and that's something kids can participate in. So you're not only teaching them, hopefully to buy healthy food, but also mm -hmm. how to manage the money that they need to buy the healthy food. So. Mm -hmm. So then it works both ways. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And the groceries are such a great, a great um, example because it's something that works for any age, right? right? Especially for younger kids, I think the the debt and financial stuff, the big picture financial stuff, is a little bit too far off. That's maybe more for high school students, but the grocery shopping is great at any level. Especially yeah. if there's something they really want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So, yay, that's wonderful. So, um, in what ways have you found that math, I know there's lots of research about how math helps our brains and all of that. So, what do you tell your students? What do I tell my students? About that, yes. About math. <laughs> about, I mean, you incorporate anything about the brain into, into your teaching of math. Yes, yeah, so I know we know that... Um, Math is, math is sort of like exercise for the brain, right? Just sort of like, like sports is exercise for your muscles. Mm -hmm. Math is like exercise for your brain. So all of those little worksheets and challenge problems and stuff that's actually strengthening your brain, um, right. which is a huge long-term payoff, right? And so, oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna so it will help you not just in math right but in all of these other challenging subjects that you're going to learn um and then of course later on in life whatever whatever cool awesome thing it is you decide you want to do with your life it's going to help you then too yeah yeah i love it math is exercise for the brain because yeah. those neurons firing because <laughs> 
I mean, math is so, it's in everything, everything we have to do, we have to calculate. Can I do this? Can I not? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that when kids and parents see that it's not this thing out there, definitely. And I like that you called it a skill and it's more relatable. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. Right. And yeah, I'm trying to think, um, you're right. It does go back to everything, right? It's in, it's in finances, it's in cooking, it's in grocery shopping. Um, it's in time management, right? If you're just trying right. to organize your schedule, that's math as well. Um, right. there's so many different areas that, that it relates to. And that is really important kids for you to understand and parents for you to share with your kids, because I feel like we, we should always know why we're doing the things that we're doing. Right. That the why, right? <laughs> exactly. It's the why, and because we, we don't want to raise kids who are just going through the motions and doing things that they think are stupid and pointless. We don't want them to raise them to be adults who are like that. We want them, we want to raise kids who are doing things that are worthwhile, putting their time towards things that are worthwhile. And so part of that is teaching them why math is worthwhile. Right. Yeah. Right. So how exactly did you get falling so in love with math that you're teaching math? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to think. I always I think I always liked math and I had some really strong math teachers in high school that made sure that I left with really solid math foundation. So I went into college. Um, you know, I actually took calculus one in college. I didn't take AP calculus, but I had really strong math foundations that I think enabled me to get through the math major. Um, and I was actually a math major and an English major. And so I I they're two different things and I just couldn't choose between them. And at the end, I ended up with enough credits to major in both of them. And um, I'm trying to think. So I majored in math in, in college and then I got my master's in math and that was fun. And I did lots of research for like um, Boeing, National Science Foundation, Los Alamos National Lab. And ultimately, oh. I just I know, ultimately, despite all the research, which is really cool, you know, I think my heart has always been in teaching. Right. And so I knew that I wanted to teach and I've been teaching at um, Irvine Valley College um, since then. Stats is my favorite thing to teach. Oh, okay. And in terms of the books and sort of like, I think when my love for math kind of branched out beyond the classroom was I had some health issues a few years back and I had to take a year off of teaching. And I, um, I was lucky, like I recovered quickly from surgery and chemotherapy and all of that. And I was left with like this year off which gave me time really to sort of you know, like reflect on how we're teaching math and what we can do to help set kids up for success in math. Right. And that led to me writing my first book um, and then the second and the third and now the podcast. And I'm just trying to help students um, beyond my own classroom as much as I can to succeed in math because there's a lot of negative mindset about math. There's just a lot of kids giving up before they ever really give it a chance. And I know that math can be such a powerful tool um, for students. So I'm just trying to help students see that. Yay, that's so wonderful. So I see your book is called, can you tell us a little bit more about your Crush Math Now book? Sure. Yes, so this is my very first book, Crush Math Now. And <clears throat> this was the one that I wrote during my year off of teaching. And it is essentially everything that I've taught my students and my, students that I've tutored over the years because I started tutoring in high school and so I did that for well over a decade wow. and um, it's really all of the um, the mindset and the study skills that you need to succeed in math at any level of math right whether you're getting through high school or getting through your PhD a wow. lot of okay. that stuff is the same you know so there's no math in the book actually oh, um, okay. yeah but I'm trying to think it covers it covers everything from like mindset to math anxiety like what to do if you just don't have grit or discipline what happens if there's like an emergency and you fall behind right. um what you can do if you have a learning disability it just sort of there's a different chapter on everything and i just sort of wrote it so you can jump to the chapter that you need and it will help you solve your problem <laughs> wonderful so where can they find your book <laughs> Yeah, so this one is, um, you can find it on Amazon. It's called Crush Math Now. And then my other book is The Love Math Journal. Yeah. And this is a growth mindset journal for fourth through eighth grade students. So if you are a parent and you're like, I don't know how to have all of these little 
different conversations with my kids about math and why we need math and how to study math. Um, this gives them lots of prompts to reflect on how they're approaching math and what to do. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, and then my last book is actually an open educational resource, which means that it's free and you can, it's called Raise Your Math Grade and you can download that one for free at allisonlovesmath.com. Nice, love it. And your podcast, what's your podcast called? Sure, my podcast is called Allison Loves Math. And <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to keep everything about it very positive because I feel like especially in math, things tend to be so serious. We're just, you know, solving problems when kids are having problems with math. Um, and I'm really just trying to keep the whole experience with math just we're, we're working towards something positive, building kids' confidence and ability to succeed in math. Um, so yeah. yes, it does have a very positive vibe to it, but I interview a lot of experts in math and education and parenting um, about how we can help our kids in math. So amazing. Wow. <laughs> this has been so good. No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this with my kids because I have an eighth grader and sometimes she complains about her math homework. So I'm definitely going to use the, it's a skill because yes. she loves basketball and she loves dancing and yes. I'm going to use that. <laughs> like, you see how you learn your dance? Yes, that's right. Exactly. Right. And if you can just sort of parallel that journey mm -hmm. with math and it's true, right? For, for right. dance or basketball, right. you know, sometimes you have to do some extra work to catch up. Sometimes there's days where you don't want to go to practice, but you do anyways. And it's all the same for sure. It's all the same. Wow. It's been such a pleasure having you on today, Alison. Thank you so much for coming on. And thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Echo, for having me. This was so much fun. Yes. And thank you everyone watching. We hope to see you on the next episode. And I hope you learned a lot today that can help you with your kids. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Thank you.